Clear my side. <laughs> I'm Steve Cramp, I'm the Managing Director of the Mount Sol and Rothy Community Heritage Centre. We've got a railway museum, but we haven't got a steam loco. And although we do the shunting demonstrations with our Rushton diesel, it's not quite the same as having a steam locomotive at the head of the train. And the opportunity arose to acquire Colin McAndrew, and we thought, well, uh, let's, let's try and go for it if we can. And we were lucky enough to get funding together, so we now have a working steam locomotive. I've uh, literally just put on about half a wheelbarrow full of wood. It burns a lot cleaner and also it stops blocking the tubes up. If we uh, lit it up on coal directly, the uh, the tubes won't last five minutes really. We won't. We would struggle to make steam. Wood burns a lot hotter. Two, two and a half hours from cold and she will be uh, ready to move. It was built for a railway construction company, a contractor called Colin McAndrew. So that's how it got its name and the way it looks now is exactly how it looks when it was built in 1911. The Locos had uh, you know, a busy life and it spent a lot of time at Chase Water when it went into preservation. It was just an ideal Loco size-wise for us to acquire it. It's just about right for what we need to do. So as we go around and tapping, we're trying to see if anything's loose, so we're, you're listening more than anything. We're looking at two similar parts, if one makes a dull sound, it's probably more tight, and if one is more of a ring, it's normally looser. If anything's loose, it could come off, parts fall off, especially when you're in motion. The track around here is quite bumpy and bounces, um, just because of the short wheelbase of the loco, so it's quite easy for any part to fall off or work loose over time. It's no automatic lubrication at all. If you don't oil it, it doesn't get oiled. And if you don't oil it, it wears out or breaks. And there's little holes everywhere. Like here. Just here, there's, you can see there's a small hole that's there for lubrication purposes. So you always just put a drop of oil in it. Look at that in there. The water, as we say, dancing in the gauge glass, um, that gives us an indication that the water is starting to get warm. The second sign is water and maybe a bit of steam coming out the cylinder cocks, so it shows that everything is warming up slowly and nicely. After that, we then start keeping an eye on the pressure gauge. Once that is starting to creep up, if needs be, uh, we can open the doors to assist with uh, the combustion, uh, keeping an eye on the black smoke. We really have shoe on uh, the railway into the bottom of the old quarry basin here. Uh, you know, we've altered points and made them just a fraction tighter and things like that. It's really a demonstration yard that we've got that's ideally suited for um, a little 040 loco, four wheeled wagons. Uh, anything any bigger than that and, um, and, and we would struggle. It's very typical of an industrial railway side and it's a coal mine and, or, or, or a, a, a slate or a granite quarry. Clear my side.
we have a program that we work to. We have four wagons and we, we move them around from one side into another and at the end of the shunt program, everything ends up back more or less where it started. Thanks, sir. Yep. The idea is that we're just trying to recreate an historical scene for how shunting uh, would have taken place in the 1920s or the 1930s. Uh, you'd have had a little tank engine, like Colin McAndrew, just pushing wagons around in a, in a cold yard. Just raking the fire, making sure there's no clinker forming on the bars. This is in, to ensure the coal is burning evenly and giving off as much British thermal units as possible. The nice thing about the shunting demonstrations is we go backwards and forwards in the siding, so we don't really go anywhere. It's not like standing on a railway platform and watching a train disappear into the distance and then you've got some time to wait for it to come back again. Here, it never goes out of sight. You know, you could stand here all day and still see the steam loco chuffing up and down. So the kids are just, wow, you know, this is brilliant. And we call it Colin, Colin the steam engine. Yeah. People can't believe how much the coal costs now. I mean, we're, we're paying 265 pound a ton plus VAT. So trundling around in the sidings today might cost us 100 pound in coal. And then you, you've got to consider as well that the boiler inspector has to come once a year and you know, you put bearing oil in there and cylinder oil in and, and they're 40 pound a, a time and they might last two or three weeks. There's a lot of considerable costs. And then in nine years time, when it's due its next 10 year overall, that'll probably end up costing maybe 20,000 pounds. So we've got to put money away every time we use it. Once we get a bit better at it, a bit more confident, then you know we'll be we'll be dressed a lot the part as well with a flat cap and a grandad shirt, and would look like an old 1920s or 30s shunter. You can just imagine Colin trundling up and down the branch line on passenger trains. They're usually popular. <laughs> <laughs> 